Hello everyone, my name is Aditya and today we will be taking a look at leveraging OCI document generator function with Oracle integration. So just before we get into uh, the use case, just a quick refresher on what Oracle functions is. Uh, the serverless offering from OCI is functions as a service. So basically you pay only when you use. So you pay for the execution and not for the idle time. Uh, it is Oracle Cloud integrated, cloud native um, and secure. Right? And it's built on top of the FN project IO. So it's open source. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the use case, right? So here uh, in today's demo, uh, what I'm going to show is whatever is within this box, right? So let's imagine that there is a front end. This could be Visual Builder Cloud Service. This could be Apex. This could be any front end, right? So your user submits a request and an integration flow is triggered. Uh, in this case, in this example, the user is submitting um, a order and for which uh, the integration is going to create uh, an invoice within ERP um, and you want to create document for that invoice and send it back to the user, right? So what here we will use is, we will use this doc generator function. So we will, uh, in the same flow, once you get uh, the payload back from the created ERP uh, invoice, uh, we will invoke a document generator function. Now again, this is a pre-built function. Um, we will take a look uh, further in the video but once you invoke it uh, what this does is it will run it will generate the document and then it will put the document out in object storage right so then the next step within your integration flow is you need to go and get that uh, particular file right which is generated um, you get that there's an optional step if you want to delete it you can or if you want to archive it or put it anywhere else you can uh, but in this demo, uh, w after I get the file, what I'm doing is I'm just emailing it back to uh, the end user who submitted the order uh, from the front end. Right? Uh, so there are certain prerequisites right? Um, for the pre-built serverless function. Uh, you need to set up networking. Of course, we need a VCN. Uh, we need a subnet uh, where this function will run. Um, and um, there are lots of videos out there explaining and documentation on what it is and how to set it up. And then the next step is to actually deploy the pre-built function. Uh, once you do that, you need to create a template file, right? So to generate the PDF, uh, two things go into the function. One is a template file and the other is the payload, right? The dynamic values that you want to update the template file to. So you have to create a template file uh, the next step is for object storage, you need to create a bucket um, and then of course you need to create a policy so that the serverless function can uh, access this object storage bucket that you have just created um, and then you yeah, place the template file uh, in the bucket. And then the last step is on the OIC end, right? So from OIC um, with Gen3, you have native actions to invoke a function or to interact with a bucket. Um, so to leverage those native actions, we need to create dynamic groups, we need to create policies uh, for both functions as well as object storage. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, deploying the pre-built function, right? So if you open the menu, go to developer services and then go to applications, you will see a list of applications. So before you build a function, you need to build an application. Now when you click on create application, it's going to ask you for a VCN and a subnet. So you have to create the VCN and the subnets before you do this step. Hmm? Once you do that, we have your application created. You can go to the list of pre-built functions. And here uh, you will see there are a couple of pre-built ones, but the one that we are interested in is the document generator function. If you click on this one, uh, it will show you uh, a, a brief description of uh, what it does. Uh, the policies that are required for this to run properly, uh, some configurations, uh, currently it just has logging level, and uh, default is info, so we're not going to change that. Um, and then you just click on create function here, you give it a name, 
give it an application and just click on create uh, everything else you can leave it as default um, and then if you just hit create now I have one created already so I will go to my uh, created function so here uh, is my doc uh, gen OIC demo created function okay. so now taking a look at the documentation right so we will have to go through the documentation to understand how the template file and how the payloads work right so if you go to the OCI official documentation uh, under creating functions actually under functions under creating functions you will see um, a pre-built uh, function catalog and under that you will see find the documentation for the document generator function um, there is an example uh, you know there are common scenarios there are example requests uh, as well here so when you scroll down you will see uh, the request payload and the response payload for a single document uh, this supports multiple documents as well but in this demo uh, we are going to use a single document and then you can see the supported document types as well right so output supported are PDF and Word and um, you know the templates should be of Microsoft Word uh, greater than or equal to 2010 version right um, and then uh, there are some other, other details which you can check but what we are interested in is the document generator tags section uh, here uh, you can see samples um, of the data that you need to pass right so you have two options you can create a file a JSON file put it in object storage and give that uh, reference to that file and this data or you can do it in line uh, in this demo I have done it in line and I'll show you once you get into the integration but um, but this is how uh, it basically applies the data dynamically right so in your template file you would have hello customer first name customer last name and if you pass this payload then it knows that it's customer dot first name is Jack and dot last name is Smith uh, and this is what would be in the output file right uh, and same way there are very complex examples here which you can take a look of um, to loop to do arrays to do sums average min max all sorts of things right so this document comes in handy when you're trying to build the template file now let me show you my template file right so my template is in of an invoice um, and as you can see these are all the parameterized uh, variables that I have um, and then because it's an invoice it can have multiple lines um, I'm using um, a, a notation that will allow me to display multiple lines here right so in a tab tabular format uh, so the description and the amount will come one by one depending on the number of lines right okay so then the next step was to go to object storage so I went to buckets and uh, inside my buckets I created a test bucket and I uploaded that uh, service invoice docx file here and uh, that's all the setup outside of OIC uh, that I had to do okay so this is my integration it gets triggered by some sort of front end so it basically exposed as a rest endpoint accepting a payload of uh, invoice um, then it goes ahead and this is a connection into the ERP cloud adapter uh, to create uh, the invoice so that I have called a rest endpoint this could be you know any system uh, for this example I've used fusion apps ERP so once the invoice is created on the ERP side and I get the payload back the next step is to actually call the OCI function to generate the document right and uh, now to use these native actions there are certain prerequisites so if you go to um, the OIC documentation uh, under create applications there is add actions uh, to application integration section and in that section you will see that there is uh, a section for infrastructure functions right um, and if you click that under prerequisites uh, this will give you uh, information now uh, important thing to note here is um, this will work only in tenancies where OCI domains are enabled right uh, so if you have an older IDCS version uh, of the tenancy then this might not work right um, then you would have to go via the rest adapter but in this case to use this native action if you have domains um, just follow these steps uh, to you know add dynamic groups and the required policies 
so uh, once you have the required policies and everything set you can come here and just drag and drop this OCI function option here into the canvas now I already have one so I'll just show you this one the way I have configured it so this will give you a list of regions to select uh, compartments uh, the, you know the applications inside the compartments functions um, and then once you click continue it will ask you for a sample input and a sample output right so the sample input you can get from the document gen uh, documentation right so if you go back to uh, this level uh, you will see example request and response so this whole thing you can just copy uh, and paste it into here um, and then the sample uh, response that you get back uh, is also provided here so you can grab it from here and pl place it there now once you do that it will generate the mappers so let me show you the mappings into this and uh, you will see uh, you know we need to fill in a lot of the values for doc gen and uh, don't forget this tag syntax because without this hard coded doc gen 1o value uh, it will throw errors right and then you give the data in this case uh, you have two options you can use an object storage or give inline so i've given inline uh, so in the content i have built my json payload uh, based on my template file uh, so then i'm using the response from the erp mappings to uh, to map uh, the payload here um, and then the line items are also coming from uh, from the response of of the receive items right and then the next step after invoking this function is if you recall the diagram this will put the file the output PDF file onto the object storage so the next step is to actually call the, uh, the object storage action to pull the file from the uh, from the bucket into OIC right uh, and again to use this native action of object storage there are certain prerequisites so if you go back to OIC documentation um, and uh, you will see an option section here to how to use it and then there's prerequisites right so just follow these prerequisites um, and then you will be able to use this option okay once you fetch the file from the object storage bucket it gets saved into OIC's temporary storage and then you get a file reference now if you map this file reference directly to your notification uh, then what I've seen is um, there is a random uh, hex string that gets generated as the file name and that's what gets sent to the user uh, without any extension so when you know sometimes business users would not understand that they have to add that extension at the end and open the file so what uh, I've done here is after I pull the file from the object storage bucket I write it again to a temporary storage to rename the file right so what I've done is in the stage file I've used a opaque schema uh, which is a very common scenario in integration uh, if you want to read up more about it uh, there is a there's a document dedicated to that so uh, in the mapping to the right file what I have on the right side is an opaque element um, and then on the left side is the uh, stream reference to that uh, downloaded file right and I just map that and rename the file and then in the notification uh, what I've done is uh, I have attached the file reference from the stage file instead of the um, object storage action okay and so I ran this integration I sent two line items um, you know two quantities each currency code and, and some other details of who the customer is and who this mail should go to right and then on the logs we will see that it was able to create the invoice on the ERP side uh, generate the PDF by calling the pre-built function using the object storage action to fetch that PDF file uh, rename the file and then send it out as a notification and this is the email that I got uh, with that invoice uh, ID 089 089 um, and then the due date is here but then if I click on preview for that invoice then we will see the document that was generated you will see all those variables in the brackets uh, were uh, replaced by actual values um, and then it even captured the uh, the lines that I sent here right okay again uh, this was just 
uh, to show you the art of possible you know you can use OIC to orchestrate and you know maybe it's not ERP maybe it's some other system that you're trying to um, create something and then generate a document out of right uh, but this is just the art of possible um, I hope this helps thank you